Now, do you know anyone who has suffered or has had burnout? I, I experienced it once when oh. I had to uh, go up to Mount Kinabalu to cover the first anniversary of the poor school children here passing away due to a natural disaster there. And I had very little sleep, two hours sleep in two days and also trying to script. So when I came back, because you had to go up and down a mountain yeah. and when they said, okay, start scripting, I couldn't do it. I had a blank and I started to cry and cry and cry because I thought my brain melted. So I had a, I had to give it to my colleagues who helped me and it was all good. Oh, it was good. It's good that you had the support group as yes, well with you. it was there. Yeah, if you feel exhausted, maybe cynical, less effective at work, you might just be experiencing getting burnt out. And we can tell you, you're not alone because more than 9 in 10 workers in Singapore are experiencing burnout. Yeah, so this came in the light of a recent study attributed to the condition to increased workloads, pressure to meet deadlines, and long working hours. I'm saying that I'm, as I'm casting a look over here at Asia Square. I'm wondering how many of you do feel that. Uh, moreover, it was found that with high burnout levels, close to two in five Singapore respondents had become less focused and lost interest in their work. Ultimately, such workers could wind up changing jobs more frequently, which is unhealthy, to resolve their negative experiences. So, with us to tell us more about burnout and how we can all better manage our work to avoid it is Dr. Zheng Jimin. She is a consultant psychiatrist at Nobel Psychological Wellness Center. Dr. Cheng, what are the most obvious signs that you're burnt out? I felt my brain was melting. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks for having me here today. So, burnout is more common than we um, imagine it to be, and it is, you know, as what Lance described, it is the sense of cynicism, exhaustion that you have towards your job. And some of the common signs that you may experience is that you dread going to work every day. You know, when you uh, go to sleep the night before, all you can think of is what do I have to do the next day? Your sleep may be disturbed. You may wake up earlier than expected. You may find yourself checking your work phone, checking your emails. And when you're at work, you just feel that the whole day is just very exhausting. Yeah, so your appetite may be affected. And with time, you may find that it overflows into your personal life. You may find that you don't enjoy what you do in your personal life anymore. And it's harder to draw the boundary between work and your personal life. Yeah, also you could end up being less productive at work too. Yes, and so, I mean, obviously, you know, all of us would want to go to work feeling positive, feeling optimistic and productive. But, you know, as time goes by, it is very easy for us to overstep our own boundaries. And I guess people try to overstep our own boundaries at work as well. So when we face a lot of workload and timelines and things like that, then we tend to get exhausted. And we end up not being able to produce good work, as it were. And therefore, we tend not, tend not to be very productive. Yeah. And Dr. Chung, you were recently interviewed on the CNA podcast, Work It, saying that the work culture that some of your patients are in, it's quite shocking. So that's, that's quite shocking for us to hear you say shocking, right? Even as you as a doctor who used to do 36-hour shifts, what was shocking to you about their work culture? I guess as a doctor, the stress really came from working long hours, doing overnight shifts, and the pressure of having to... Um, tend to patients, but when I speak to my own patients, I was quite shocked that a lot of the um, exhaustion that they feel is because of interpersonal relationships, you know, po office politics, and also the stress of having to manage their personal life as well as work, work life. And, and this is especially so for working parents. A lot of them feel very inadequate. So when I mean shocking, it was shocking to me that sometimes the workplace politics can be very severe. They often feel bullied and they don't realize it. Yeah. Do you think people who are suffering burnout are usually older people? You know, maybe parents of young kids and people in their uh, early 40s, 50s. Are you seeing burnout in the younger people? Maybe those under 30, under 25 perhaps? I guess anyone can experience burnout. I, I really, it really depends on the type of the job and individual factors like your personality and, and as well as your own uh, family you know, situation. So for some people like working parents, having to balance a full-time job as well as going home, being caregivers for your children or your elderly parents, that can be, they can be more prone to developing burnout because they're essentially running two full jobs in that sense. 
yeah. as the sandwich generation you're talking about. <laughs> I think everyone is prone to, to yeah. burn out, but I guess people who have more responsibilities, like um, older adults, you know, having to take care of the children and, and elderly parents, they would have more responsibilities on their plate. So obviously it's harder for them to manage everything effectively. So may, they may often feel very inadequate. They feel like they're not doing good enough. Yeah, so that's a problem. Well, we've come across this term, Doctor, quiet quitting, right? So some have said that quiet quitting your job, which is doing the bare minimum on a daily basis and don't even talk about doing overtime, right? Uh, not going above and beyond is the antidote, antidote to burnout. So really, is quiet quitting the way to do it? In fact, I just heard of this term, you yeah. know, yeah. just before climbing on stage, I was like, what is quiet quitting? Quiet, quit quietly? What does that mean, you know? <laughs> so when I found out that, oh, it's about doing the bare minimum, I think it makes sense. But to rephrase it, I would say just doing what you are comfortable with. So it goes back to understanding your own boundaries and limits, because everyone is different, right? Some people are okay to do a little bit more, some are not. So I would say it's more about understanding your own limits and then working within them rather than just doing the bare minimum. because if you do the bare minimum, you may feel that you're not pulling your weight at work as well, so that may not be good for you. Can you tell us what are the first few signs that you you know may not know about that could trigger that you're on your way to a burnout? Okay. Uh, one sign that I've seen a lot in my patients is irritability. You find yourself snapping at people close to you, like you go home and you look at your kids, you just feel angry you know you look at your spouse you feel upset when you're driving you are prone to road rage when you're commuting to work everything just ticks you off so when there is increased tension in you you're more likely to be ticked off um, it's easier to be irritable so when you find yourself losing control of your emotions I guess that could be a first sign that you're overstretched you're quite exhausted already yeah but <laughs> doctor what if you're burnt out you're irritable but you're happy because you like your job. Then how? Then you may not be burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> because burnout is really about feelings of negativity. That means and you don't, you just I, don't, I just don't want to do it. Huh? Yeah, but if you're thriving, you're happy. I guess you're happily busy. Yeah. <laughs> but still, you know, even the most productive and uh, high-functioning individuals still need to take care of themselves. Yeah, And you need to understand that you cannot do everything. There yeah. is only 24 hours a but day. A lot of us may have certain elements of burnout, but when do we know it's it's critical? You need to do something about it. You need to have maybe a couple of mental health days to, to, to chill, to relax, to maybe regroup. Okay. I would say, you know, don't wait until you reach that point. Don't, don't wait until you feel all the mood and physical effects of burnout. In fact, you should take care of yourself on a daily basis. You know, if you feel that today is a particularly tense and uh, intense, intense day, then you, you may want to hold back uh, for a few hours, take some time out. So I would say not to wait until you are burnt out before you do anything about it because prevention is always better than cure. And what about you, doctor? Yes. How do you do this? How do you prevent yourself from getting there? Do you go for a jog? Do you go to the gym? Yes, so what I do is I set aside an hour every morning uh, because I have two young kids. So I put them to bed and then I go to bed. So sometimes it's very hard for people to do because you feel that once your kids go to bed, you want to spend one to two hours on your own scrolling and things like that. But I shift it to morning so that I get up extra early, I go for you know, an exercise session and then I have some quiet time for myself to read or just to meditate, things like that. So that one hour in the morning is something that I don't compromise on. Uh, that can be very difficult to do if you yeah. think of it uh, first time, but it's really just working out your schedule and knowing what pockets of time you have to really dedicate it for yourself. Mm. Dr. Chen Chimin, a consultant psychiatrist at Noble Psychological Wellness Center. It's time for us to cross back to the CNA 938 studio with Money Mind Stan and Andrea. Remember, we will be on, Mel and I will be on uh, later this evening from 5 to 8 on Singapore Today and the 6 o'clock report. Uh, do join us then and thank you for your company for this afternoon. And remember to download the CNA app where you can listen to us live 
as always, wherever you go, whether in your car, you're in the MRT station, is a good time to catch up with the news when you're in the MRT station, right? So download the CNA app, uh, very crucial, latest new information available to you, biz, whether it concerns business, world news, 